Hello, my friends, and welcome to Time Between Times Storytelling with me, Owen Staten. Do a daily podcast, I thought. Yeah, that will be fun. A podcast every day, a story told every day. Yeah, it's not easy, is it? (laughs) But I've enjoyed every moment of it so far, and I am so grateful for all the lovely feedback that you are all giving me every day, and for the donations you are making to the Police Rehabilitation Centre at Flint House in Goring-on-Thames. That place means a lot to me. It's been 20 years since something happened to me that changed a lot in my life, and I needed help. And that's where I found that help. So if I can repay them just a small, tiny bit, it means the world. So thank you for all the donations you are making, and I will put the link again in the show notes. But anyway, let's get on to the story. I think that's why you're all here anyway. The one I will tell you today I have told before on the old YouTube channel. But it's a story that that still makes me wonder, a story that still brings alive my imagination, and as a child, it's a story that terrified me. It's a simple story, one that happens really quickly, there's no complexity, there's no characters as such, but it's a story that has stayed with me for a long time, and it happened in one of my favourite places to visit, the Tower of London. Now, if ever there was a place that was haunted... If ever there was a place where spirits roamed, it's there. I love going there, stepping through its gate, walking under its towers, seeing what it has to offer, and what it has to offer is a thousand years of history. Their queens have lost their head. Their spies have been killed. It has been under siege. Their animals have been kept in a great menagerie. And if you get a chance to walk its old storied corridors, you should take that chance, for it is something you will always remember. Before we go there, let us go to where we need to be. That mindset, that place of positivity, That place we go where we can lose ourselves in a tide of tales. Come with me, my friends, to the fire pit at the heart of the forest, at the time between times. Close your eyes if it's safe to do so. Take a few deep breaths. And imagine yourself leaving your home It's easy to stay at home, isn't it? It's easy to put that television on. It's easy to doom-scroll through your phone. But that's not what we're doing tonight. We step out onto the road in front of our house. The road is busy. There are cars and vans and bikes zooming past. Everyone seems in a rush. And although our mind makes us want to go striding forward. We take a breath. We look around. We feel the breeze on our face. You place your hand on the stone wall outside your house and feel the cold. It's been there a long time. It's seen a lot of things. We stride towards the forest. The street lights are just coming on above us. There is a slight hum in the air. It's getting cooler now. The sky is starting to turn grey as we reach the eaves of the forest. You look at those trees stretching to the sky, each one of them a sentinel. You take another breath and step inside. 
the coolness that permeates your very being awakens your soul as you step onto the forest path. The leaves crunch underneath your feet as you walk. You come to the old mossy tower and peer in through its dark entranceway. For a second, you think you hear a growl inside. You step back and turn around and there is the babbling brook. You kneel down and look at it. The stones under the water are so clear. For how long have they sat there as the water has washed over them? You place your hand in. You stride over the stream. And there you see it in front of you, the fire pit at the heart of the forest where your friends have gathered. As you walk into the clearing, you feel the heat from the fire. You hear the chatter of your friends, the laughter that permeates the air. And you know you have, you have come home. You look up and see the sun and the moon sharing the same sky, because now is the time between times, the time when it's neither night nor day, but the sun has gone and the sky is grey. The time when the veil between our world and the fairy world grows wafer, wafer thin, so thin that for a few moments, and just a few moments, we can reach into the realm of fairy, and for a few moments they can reach into ours. Then we can grasp hands and know that we are there in the land of story, where nothing can harm us. The land of story, where our emotions are awakened, happiness, sadness, even anger, but they are emotions that we can leave in this land, because it's a place we go where our imaginations come alive. Welcome, my friends, to the time between times. Far away, you can hear the howl of wolves. You can hear, you can hear the growl of bears. But you know you are safe at the fire pit at the heart of the forest. The storyteller stands and begins his tale. Long ago and far away, in the Tower of London, a bustling, beautiful fortress, its walls stretching to the sky, the white tower in the centre of it looking out all over London. The place is filled with animals, the place is filled with soldiers. The place is filled with story for centuries. Grim happenings have gone on here. Built by William the Conqueror when he came from that land across the sea, winning the Battle of Hastings in the year 1066, he built the fortress on a mound in the centre of London to make sure he could see all around him. For centuries things had happened there, peasants had revolted, armies had gathered, executions had taken place, including the Queen Anne Boleyn, killed by a French swordsman on the orders of her husband. So many stories, so many spirits. But where we go is to the year 1816, to the old jewel house in the Martin Tower. There a soldier was beginning his nighttime patrols. The sun was just starting to set. The moon was starting to rise. He peered through a barred window and looked outside and saw a grey pallor descend upon the day. He knew it would be a long night. He was not due to finish his patrol until the sun rose at the following day. You see, there are always two time between times. He took a breath moved his rifle from one shoulder to the other and thought of all the things that had happened in his career. Only a year before he had fought at the Battle of Waterloo and seen horrors uncounted. His reward was to be brought to the tower where his great privilege was to guard the crown jewels. The door to the jewel house was closed and locked and bolted and is well guarded. He knew beyond those great wooden doors were jewels like anyone had never seen, as bright as the sun on the brightest day. He walked back and forth, feeling his booted feet upon the stone flagstones of the corridor. 
He knew underneath him, in the corridor below, there was another soldier doing the same. He had counted the steps. There were thirty-eight between the door and the steps leading down. And those thirty-eight steps he would cover hundreds of times throughout the night. He walked towards the door that led to the jewel house. He had got into the habit of placing his hand upon the wood every time he got there, before turning and walking the other way to the top of fourteen steps that led to the ground floor. He turned around and started to walk towards the steps. With every step he seemed to take, the shadows seemed to lengthen. The corridor was lit by one fiery torch, and the shadows had grown so long. It was then that he heard it. Behind him, from behind the door that led to the treasures uncounted, what sounded like a hiss. He stopped and turned around, and what he saw he could not believe. It seems that underneath the door that led to the jewel house, a great smoke was gathering, seeping out into the corridor in which he walked. He stood there watching it. First of all, he thought there must have been a fire, but he could not think how this came about, and he looked again and the smoke was gathering in front of the door, forming some shape. At first he thought it looked like a formless cloud, but then it grew and grew and grew until the shape stood over eight foot tall. He saw it morph into the shape of a great bear. He had only seen a bear once before, and that was at the tower many years ago, but he was absolutely certain this is what it was. The shape seemed to come together, and the bear formed into a great grey mass, opening its mouth, and with a maw as big as a mountain, it roared down the corridor, echoing and causing the flame to shake upon the floor. He stepped back tripped over his feet and fell to the ground. The bear moved forward, silently but with purpose. It seemed to fill the very corridor itself. How could this bear have come out from the jewel house? The soldier scrambled to his feet and rushed forward, showing courage unbound with his bayonet locked. He rushed at the bear and stabbed it right in its stomach, for it towered over him. Every hair on his head stood atop. Every fibre of his being was forcing him to flee, but this was a veteran of many battles. He rushed forward, but the blade went right through the bear's body and embedded itself in the doorway behind him with a thud. It seemed to lose itself right into the middle of the wood, and he tried to pull it free, but it would not move. He let go of the gun and staggered back and fell to the ground. The bear ignored everything he had done, but then looked down at him with glowing red eyes and again roared, a roar as loud as a dragon. The soldier scrambled to his feet and rushed backwards, this time tripping over the top step and thudding down the stairs behind him. He screamed and called out as he landed with a thud at the bottom of the fourteen steps. His colleague on the floor below rushed towards him and looked at him, because the man he could see on the heap on the ground was not the man he had seen scant hours before. His hair was now totally white. His face was paler than the freshest snow. And he stood there gasping and pointing up the stairs. The second soldier rushed up there, thinking some intruder must have come across. But there was nothing there. The light had gone out and there seemed to be some just residue or glow of some substance in the air. But what drew his attention was the gun sticking into the door, embedded almost up to the hilt of the bayonet. It took three soldiers to pull it out of the door the next day, 
and the soldier who'd seen the bear could only mutter his story time and time again before he died of fright two days later. Whether anyone has seen the bear since, we do not know. But the story has been passed down through generations. Who or what was it? It is known that a great polar bear was once gifted to the King Henry III by the King of Norway many years before. It was also known that a grizzly bear once lived in the tower. Both were cruelly treated. Both were fed inappropriate food. And the bear, the polar bear, was even made to swim in the Thames and catch fish. So whether this spirit was one of them, we shall never know. But bears had found home in the tower. And on this night, this night of all nights, one of them had showed itself to an unsuspecting sentry who died of fright a scant two days later. And that, my friends, is the tale of the ghost bear of the Tower of London. A simple story, but one as a child that terrified me. And even when I visit the tower, which I try and do as often as I can, and I stride down its corridors, going to the, the great white tower, or to see the crown jewels, I still wonder where it was, where the bear was seen. It was said for years following the incident. The scars in the door were evident, where the bayonet had thrust through and hung there in the sky. Keep an eye out if you go there, my friends, for that mist that forms, for that growling sound, for that creature beyond the veil. And I thank you for joining me here again at the time between times, the time it's neither night nor day, but the sun is gone and the sky is grey. I am Owen Staten. You can find out more about me at welshstoryteller.com and if you would, please consider donating to the Police Rehabilitation Centre at Flint House for this, the Festival of Fable. I would very much appreciate it. Take care, my friends, and I will see you tomorrow for the final story in this week of myth and legends. No star.